Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the unboxing of the Redmi Note 7. So guys, here's the box, here's the Redmi Note 7 and this phone is available in two variants. Base variant is priced at 10,000 rupees for, for 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB of storage. Next variant is priced at 12,000 rupees for 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of storage. That's the one we have. It's available in three colors, Sapphire Blue, Onyx Black and Ruby Red. And we have the blue color with us right now. So this is how the box looks on the back. We have some specifications, IMA number and so on. It even says made in India. So here it is, Sapphire Blue. Now on the back, we have some highlighting features like the Snapdragon 660 processor, bigger display, dual camera setup and so on. Along with IMA numbers and it even says made in India. So guys, now let's unbox it and see what this phone or this box has to offer. By the way guys, this phone is sold exclusively online on Flipkart. You can also find it in Mi stores and other retail partners of Xiaomi. And it says Redmi by Xiaomi. So it's like Redmi has already become a separate brand in India as well. Just in case you don't know, Redmi is now a separate brand. It is under Xiaomi, but it is not exactly a Xiaomi phone or a Xiaomi product. Anyway, this is the cardboard box that we get first inside the box. So these are the contents. We get documentation as usual and the transparent case. So this is the blue color. That's why we are getting a transparent case. If we get the black color, we will get a black case. And inside this case, we get the SIM card ejector. Next, we have the phone itself. Let me just put that aside for now. Next, we have a regular 10 watts power adapter. Now, this phone does support fast charging, but this is a normal 10 watts charger. You can buy the fast charger from Xiaomi website and charge your phone fastly. Finally, this is a USB Type-C charging cable. So finally, this phone or the Redmi Note 7 comes with a Type-C port. So guys, this is the phone and we have a sticker on the front once again with the same highlighting features that we have seen on the box. And this is how it looks on the back with IMEA numbers and the sticker showing the SIM card placement and so on. So let me just remove the stickers. By the way guys, you can remove these stickers. It won't affect your warranty or anything. I've seen many people just keeping them on. So guys, this is the Sapphire blue color and initial impressions doesn't look all that impressive because we have already been seeing so many phones with a glass or a fiberglass panel with this radiant color. Yes, it definitely does look quite premium, definitely better than the previous Redmi phones. But just from the looks, it's not that impressive. Now, having said that, I've just realized that this back panel is actually made of glass, which makes it a bit more premium. Like the feel of this phone or the back panel itself feels much more premium than all those Realme phones we've been seeing for the past year. Anyway, guys, this is how the phone looks on the back and this is how the phone looks on the front. Now, this is the free case that we get inside the box. It's a soft silicone pouch, very soft and flexible. Now, this is how the phone looks with the case on. It's a soft silicone case. It can definitely help you with fingerprints and the grip, but it doesn't have any raised lift for the camera module or the display. So you should be extra careful while using the phone, even with the case on. My recommendation, get a better case as soon as possible. Now let's have a quick physical overview and then check out the complete specifications of this phone. So guys, on the back, this phone has a glass panel with a gradient finish to it. So it's a 2.5D curved glass and has this two-tone finish or a gradient look to it which looks very unique from all the previous Redmi phones or the Redmi Note series phones. Now at the top, it is a dual camera setup with a 12 megapixel primary camera with f2.2 aperture. That's followed by a 2 megapixel secondary camera for taking portrait shots. That's followed by a dual LED flash and something engraved that says AI camera and gives out the camera specifications. Beside that, we have a circular fingerprint scanner which has a nice groove to it. And at the bottom, it simply says Redmi by Xiaomi. Now on the front, this one has a massive 6.3 inch LTPS display with Full HD plus resolution in the new 19.5 is to 9 aspect ratio. It has a maximum brightness of 450 nits and comes with a 2.5D curved Corning Gorilla Glass 5 for protection. So that's all pretty great. Now about the display, it has the earpiece followed by a 13 megapixel front facing camera with f2.0 aperture. Below the display, it's completely plain and the notch is smaller than the previous Redmi phones but slightly bigger when compared to the current generation of phones. 
Now coming to the sides, on the right side it has a power and volume button, seem to be made of plastic. They have a nice clicky feel to them and they are sufficiently elevated. On the left side it has a SIM card tray housing a nano SIM slot along with a hybrid SD card slot. So you can either use two nano SIM slots or a nano SIM and an SD card, not both at once. Now at the top it has an IR blaster which happens to be my favorite feature. Following that is a 3.5mm audio jack and a secondary microphone for noise cancellation. At the bottom it has two speaker grills, one for the primary microphone and another one for the mono speaker and at the center it has a USB type C charging port. Now coming to the rest of the specifications, this phone sports a Snapdragon 660 processor with Adreno 512 GPU. It's an octa-core processor built using the 14 nanometer architecture, clocked at a maximum of 2.2 GHz. The variant I am having comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage. Right out of the box, it will be running MIUI 10 based on Android 9.0, that's Android Pie. Now powering all this is a 4000mAh battery. It supports quick charge 4.0, but as I've said, it comes with a regular 10 watts power adapter inside the box. Now with all these things, this phone has a thickness of 8.1mm and weighs 185 grams, which is pretty similar to all the previous Redmi Note series phones. Now, initial impressions in hand, it kinda feels heavy but not as heavy as the previous Redmi Note series phones. Now coming to some highlights, this phone supports dual 4G along with dual LTE. It even has Bluetooth 5.0 support and an infrared blaster at the top to control your AC, TV or anything with an infrared sensor. This phone is also splash proof. It comes with P2i nano coating on the back. Now let's turn on the phone and see what we get right out of the box. I mean what we get with the phone right out of the box. So once again it says Redmi by Xiaomi. Now it says powered by Android. So this phone is running MIUI 10 right out of the box and we do get all these languages. Let's just go on with English. Next select the region, that's India. Let's connect to the Wi-Fi. Now I'm going to register the fingerprint. As usual, it's pretty fast. And even the haptic feedback is alright. Now on this page, there are some changes that you need to do to avoid all those advertisements from UI. So firstly, disable all these toggles. User experience programs and diagnostic data. Personalized ad recommendations and wallpaper carousel. You can actually use this wallpaper carousel, but it's better to disable it and just keep the first option enabled if you want. Now these are the two themes that come right out of the box. I'll just go with the second one. And now we are almost done. So guys, this is how the phone looks once we turn it on and switch it up. This on the left side, we have the app world, which is just a place for all your widgets and some quick shortcuts. These are all the applications and as usual, there is no app draw. So all the apps are thrown to home screen. And this is your notification toggles area and this big bar over here is for the brightness now this is the volume control well it looks pretty huge but pretty convenient now these are all the apps that come pre-installed there isn't a lot of bloatware probably these are the only apps that you might want to uninstall if you don't use them and some apps from xiaomi now let's go to settings and check the about page so right out of the box this phone is running MIUI version 10.2.4 that's still MIUI 10 Based on Android version 9.0, that's Android Pie right out of the box. So there you go, that's Android Pie. And this phone has the January security patch, which is pretty good. Now let me just change a few settings to display the RAM usage on the recent apps page. Just need to enable that toggle. And if we go to the recent apps page, we can see that out of that 4 GB of RAM, we have about 2.2 GB of free RAM right out of the box. Now coming to the storage section, out of that 64GB of space, you get about 52.5GB of space for your user apps and user data, which is more than sufficient for most people. Now let's check out the camera application. So this is the default MIUI camera and once we open it up, it simply says AI camera and this is the interface for the rear camera. As usual, you can swipe left or right to change between different modes and you have a dedicated button at the top for AI mode, which simply takes better pictures with better colors. And on the left side, we have Auto HDR as usual. Now coming to video recording, this phone can record video at a maximum of 1080p resolution at 60fps. That's the maximum it can do. Now the processor on this phone, Snapdragon 660, can record video in 4K resolution, but for some reason, they've disabled it by default on this phone. By using third-party camera applications, you can record video in 4K. And as usual, we also get image stabilization, that's electronic image stabilization while recording video, even on this phone. Now on the right side we have the regular portrait mode and as you can see camera application goes a bit finicky, it flickers a bit. When we switch to the portrait mode, it might be a temporary glitch and might be fixed with a future update. Next we have a quick option to take pictures in square mode for Instagram, next panorama and the pro mode at the end. 
Now let's come back to the front camera. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera. Everything's pretty much the same, except for this extra toggle at the top for AI mode, even for the front camera. On the left side, we have video recording option and we can record video only at a maximum of 1080p using the front camera. And on the right side, we can take portrait shots. That's portrait selfies. So there we go. So guys, this is the camera interface and these are some sample pictures taken using the front Android cameras. Now let's test the speaker loudness. Hi there guys, I'm Nikit from Ready Tech and this is the unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So guys, this is the box and this is the latest and greatest from Samsung for the first half of 2019. Now this S10 Plus is truly a benchmark for all. So guys, speaker loudness of this phone is pretty good. Not the loudest one I've heard in this price segment, but sufficiently loud for ringtones, alarms and everyday media consumption. I still wish it was slightly more louder. Now let's test the fingerprint scanner, I've already set it up. so. Let's give it a try. Now this one has a fingerprint scanner on the back. It's very easily accessible to the index finger and it has a small cutout or a depth to it to easily identify it. And there's a different texture from the glass pack. So it's much more easily identifiable. Now the phone is locked, so let's give it a try. So the fingerprint scanner is pretty fast, not super fast or the fastest fingerprint scanner out there, but probably the second best thing out there when specifically compared to Oppo and Vivo phones and the latest Poco phone. Now when we use the correct fingerprint, it immediately unlocks the phone along with the lock screen sound. And when we use the wrong fingerprint, it simply gives a haptic feedback saying that it's a wrong fingerprint. It's a nice touch, but I wish we could get some kind of haptic feedback even when we use the correct fingerprint. Now I'll configure the face unlock feature. So let me add my facial data. Now I'll add my facial data to test out the face unlock feature. So I'm going to add it without my glasses on. Now it's done. Now let's test it out. So it's pretty fast in good lighting conditions. By the way, this is what the camera is looking at. So these are the lighting conditions. Now let's test it once again. Now I'm going to close my eyes and see if it will work or not. So if the eyes are closed, it doesn't work at all. So in good lighting conditions, face unlock works and it's super fast, but not as fast as other phones because I'm able to see the lock screen. Now I'm going to turn off all the lights. So it's not working. By the way, this is what the camera is looking at. So these are the low lighting conditions I'm talking about. On the back, there is a light, but it's clearly not able to see my face. Probably this is the worst lighting conditions. That's why it's not working.
So guys, in low lighting conditions, it is definitely struggling and almost not working at all. If I didn't have that light on the back, maybe it would have worked. So guys, on the whole, face unlock is definitely usable. It is pretty fast in good lighting conditions and in low lighting conditions, it might or might not work. I'll talk more about it in the complete review. Now, one of my favorite features on Xiaomi phones are the full screen gestures. So let me just turn them on. So you can turn them on from full screen display and just enable this toggle. And now navigation buttons will be hidden and you can use the full screen gestures. So to go home, you can simply swipe up to open recent apps page, swipe and hold. And these are all your recent apps. Now, if you want to close any of these applications, simply swipe right. That application will be closed. Now, if you want to go back, you can swipe from the right side or the left side to go back. If you want to switch between the current application and previous application, you can swipe and hold to switch to that application. Well, for that to work, you need to enable the toggle. So just enable it. Now, swipe and hold to switch the current application with the previous application. So it's a super cool feature, super cool gesture. As I've said, I really love these MIUI gestures, but the only problem is we can't trigger Google Assistant with these gestures. So if you want to use Google Assistant, you need to go to home and then use the Google widget or use the Google search to trigger Google Assistant. Right now, that's the only con. Now, before I conclude, these are the anti 2 and Geekbench scores. So guys, this is the new Redmi Note 7. Well, compared to Redmi Note 5, this is definitely a huge improvement, whether it's the overall display, the notch design, or the glass back, everything looks premium and way more refined. Even in terms of performance, it had a huge boost. It comes with the Snapdragon 660 processor and the cameras also look pretty decent. You still get that massive 4000 mAh battery along with an infrared blaster at the top. So this is the same old Redmi Note series phone with a better build, better display, better performance, better cameras and overall better at everything. Now everything on this phone looks awesome. Personally, I like MIUI and those gestures as I've mentioned earlier. But the only con with this phone is the lack of a dedicated SD card slot. So when we compare the competition, mainly the ASUS Zenfone Max Pro M2 base variant, which is priced at 10,000 rupees, also comes with this name Snapdragon 660 processor. That phone comes with a dedicated SD card slot, while this doesn't. So considering the competition, will you be willing to buy a Redmi Note 7 at 10 or 12,000 rupees, or will you be looking at other phones? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you're planning to buy this phone please use the link in the description it always helps the channel and if you want us to make any specific video tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.